Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Amazon Moguls. We've got a recurring guest on, Adam, who was on a few episodes ago. I think uh, we did a, an interview about your Amazon journey. Um, and we've got you on the d- again today just to catch up and see how things have been going. Um, if you guys want to see the previous uh, interview we did, I'll put the link up here somewhere. Hopefully I'm pointing in the right spot. Um, there or there, who knows how it works. Um, but yeah, how's it going anyway, Adam? How's things going for you? Yeah, not bad. Just been really busy. Um, I think just uh, it's getting to that. Well, Q1 was sort of a bit slow, but it's just getting to the point now where um, we're just busy doing doing lots of things really obviously with the private label side um looking to get more products kind of putting amazon but obviously at the same time i'm trying to juggle doing ra and oa as well yeah. which is uh retail arbitrage and yeah. online arbitrage as well so it's you got lots been very busy you got your fingers in many sure. pies then it sounds like you're you're doing everything basically which yeah. is quite rare actually i think to see it, someone doing maybe all of them like oa ra and private label um, so you mentioned your Q4, yeah. was, Q, so Q1 was a bit slow. Uh, how did that go for you? I mean, it was obviously my best Q1 because the, the previous year was kind of, I was just starting to do Amazon FBA. So I was a bit like slow and that's when I just started getting into Discord groups and things like that. And obviously Q4 was, uh, last year was really good. So this was like my first proper Q1 and it was, I say slow, but it, I still, it was still good. But it was just in terms of like I think January was a bit slow. There wasn't many sales on and mm. things like that. So that was all. Um, and obviously I was making a lot of orders with private label, and that, that was a lot of that was for sea ship, like by sea ship, and so that's obviously going to take a while. So yeah, that that that's why it was a bit slow. Okay, but... no problem. What kind of numbers did you do in the end? Do you know roughly? Q one. Uh, I think it was. I think I did a. I think I'll have a look. I think it was a thirty thousand sales. I think. Okay, nice. Um. Yeah. With your ROI, was, that's pretty probably pretty it was, good profit. <laughs> yeah, I think I think yeah, it was I think it was worth thirty thousand from what I remember. Okay, yeah. nice, cool. So more than your previous job, I guess. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that's cool. That's why yeah, like I've always kind of said I, I wouldn't go into doing so Amazon FBA if it wasn't gonna be worthwhile. Yeah. But it's with it with obviously it, there's no glass ceiling with it as well. So you've got I mean it, this year will be whatever it is, but you've got to think, mm, you know, absolutely. three, four, five years ahead as yeah, well. Q1's meant to be the uh, slowest. It's endless dreams, yeah, but... Q1's meant to be the slowest one as well, isn't it? So I hear, I've heard a lot of people moaning in a lot of the groups saying Q1 was very difficult to source, you know, not as many sales yeah. as pr- pr- you know, prior years. Yeah. And I think I am, I think my aim was to try and, um, I think it was actually a lot more than 30 now i'm coming to think of it i'll double check yeah sure. but I, i've always said like just kind of doesn't matter what the number is uh just sort of like have a goal and try and push for it Absolutely, because yeah. even if you don't obviously get the goal you're going to be closer than not setting a goal has so to speak yeah so i did um, um so look 20 uh, i've got some refunds come in of course <laughs> yeah you look at you look at the figures at the time and then obviously as, a few, as the weeks go on you get a few refunds in but i did uh 121 in sales oh, no. and 24.4 in profit so not too bad so i was very happy with that obviously <laughs> um let's have a look yeah i'm sure you're more than 30 let's, num- let's get the proper numbers let's get the proper numbers up exactly it's what it comes down to, doesn't it? Numbers. Well, it, uh, people like to hear numbers because it's inspiring. So, you know, I never thought I'd be making this much money after only two years of doing Amazon. You see people post their results online. Uh, and I still see, see results right. now. Go ahead. You got them? Got the numbers up. Sorry. So it's it was 69,000 sales and <laughs> I was lying. It wasn't 30. Yeah, so you smashed it, basically. I think, I think it's because I had it in my head for a month. I think I had in my head for a month to try and hit 40,000 sales. I think that's what um, get, I'm getting confused with the numbers. Yeah, I don't sure, think I got yeah. that, but I was close to it. Yeah. You don't um, always keep these numbers in your that's head, why I, said the number. I didn't know exactly roughly what, no, yeah, definitely. I knew roughly what I made. So that's obviously, that's pretty amazing for just the first, what is considered the slow part of the year. So that, you know, and when you think that's about it. what Q4 that's, is going to do, hopefully, um, if it's only going no, by last year, um, you know, think, you should be on. I think it's just being prepared. Isn't 20, it? It's, 30K, it's just going to be about getting prepared for it. Oh yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. But every year, everyone says, "Oh, you know, I'm ready for it," and then they're always not. So, but it's it's a good problem Never to have, you. isn't it? Never so, know. I'm just hoping there's going to be some good retail arbitrage opportunities, like the one we had last year, um, with a sort of sanctuary yeah. spa gift set that I did very well on. I think we had a good one in January. I think it was. I think it was 
pretty nationwide in terms of quite a lot yeah. of new people knew, but I think it was the Lego. There was the it? huge Tesco national sale, but the problem with that was then obviously it tanked for quite a long time. I've still got all that stock yeah. actually packed up. Um, I'm yeah. bas- basically saving yeah. it for Q4. Um, so yeah, I made I made the mistake with that because I actually sent it in, but for two reasons. It was one because I didn't really have the space to keep yeah. it, but it was also because I had in my head um, it would sell well. Um, but about fifty percent of it has sold for what I wanted price wise, but a lot of it's just sort of on the low end, but it'll yeah. probably recover. It will recover. If it means Absolutely. I've got a kind of, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. I've got, I might have to take it back out, keep for Q4. Yeah, I've got no we'll doubt see. that that price will cover. I knew it would. I kind of, cause I saw so many people out there doing it and collecting so much stock. I knew it was going to end up tanking. Um, there's a lot of new people as well got into that and ended up tanking the prices. A lot of non-VAT people. So I kind of, I just didn't even think about sending it in. I just labeled it up, yeah. stuck it into boxes and then, well, I've got a few there. I've got some in my locker. Um, and so that's the yeah. best way with Lego, I think. I think was, I mean, just sometimes yeah. just hold it. I think it. that was the problem because it, it was in a few Discord groups, obviously. Oh, yeah, so absolutely. that's probably yeah. why. And then people were getting mad yeah. stock as well. So, yeah, for those of you that don't know, in January this year, I can't remember what date it was, maybe mid-January, Tesco did a crazy sale on, on Lego, uh, a few other things as well. But mainly it was Lego. It was 25% of the price. So, um, and my first store I went into, even the staff didn't know about it. And the prices on the shelf hadn't been changed. So I went in and, you know, there's that, something that was like 30 pounds was down to like whatever a quarter of that is. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, I was scanning it using the scanning thing and, um, yeah, the prices were just insane. Yeah, it was like, yeah. And it's the first time I've been and done our... Like nearly 25%, <clears throat> wasn't it? Yeah, 25% of the price, yeah. So, and it's the first, so if it was for, if it was normally 40 pounds, it'd be 10 pounds, basically. Um, and it, yeah, it, so essentially that's what yeah, it was, yeah. it was the first time that I've ever done RA where my trolley was so full of Lego that actually some of them were like falling off the top, like sliding off. <laughs> and then and a, a staff member came over and she was like, oh, I wanted one of those for my grandson. And I was like, go on then, take it, go on. And I was like, I always try and be nice to them. So, yeah, yeah, if you want to take one, go for it. You know, I'm happy to share. Yeah. Um, I think if, if, if I'm honest, uh, it doesn't matter what you do. I think it's just seeing the opportunity and just taking yeah, it. absolutely, I mean, yeah. Yeah. You know, like, it might be a bit controversial, but the God, like, if you think of like the margins that the supermarkets and that make as well, yeah, so. absolutely, yeah. So, yeah. yeah, those are great sales. Obviously, Lego is a huge seller, um, very popular brand. So, you can always keep it for Q4, yeah. So, you you, you, you can know, you basically know. not go wrong with Lego, <laughs> that's pretty much one of those brands that yeah. you just can never go wrong with. <laughs> so, you know, um, there was some really good Lego I kept for Q4 actually last year, and it sold really well. Obviously, yeah. I didn't, I don't think I actually managed to sell it all because I actually went for a, um, I sort of pushed the price up and I, I managed to hit that. Anyway, I got some stuff left over. It's sort of slowly sold and the price went back down. Yeah. But whether I think I need to make a decision whether to sort of just keep it in Amazon for storage fees or take it out. And it'll definitely sell again in Q4. It's a retired set. Okay. This is only one SKU yeah. as well. So obviously there was a few different ones. But Lego, yeah. It, if we're going into that, it's, yeah. Yeah, it's incredible. It's, like, a, you can always it's keep such a great brand. Like but the problem is um, the best strategy is to buy and hold until retirement or buy it just as it's retiring then hold it maybe for six months to a year or wait for Q4 and then sell it. But obviously yeah, you, once you, get that cycle. you need to store it. That's the problem. So you need... See, like it's not my strategy, but I know people oh, that yeah, do it. Absolutely. So yeah, yeah. it works I for some people. I do a bit of a hybrid strategy yeah. on it. I've got some Lego here, um, but it, it's a pain in the ass having all the stock lying around. So you kind of yeah. need a... It's honestly, it's just do your due diligence. It's entirely up to you what yeah, your strategy so. is. But it's definitely something I'd recommend people. Oh yeah, you could literally do an entire. You can make a living just off Lego if you get to the point where you know all the yeah. sets that are retiring. And there's loads of websites out there as well. So many resources with Lego. Um, know when they're retiring. It's just no way to keep yeah. it. You know, it's just Lego's um, not designed to be stored. One thing, you know, collectors like good no, condition boxes. No. Um, and two, it's storing yeah. them is a pain in the butt. So I need to pay somewhere. So then you need to be storing enough Lego in there. Like my storage unit's about two hundred and twenty pound a month. You know, I need to have enough Lego in there to be appreciating more than two hundred and twenty pound a, a month. I said that's a lot of Lego to be quite honest maybe with you. If, yeah. So it's, maybe if you've got your own warehouse, but then if you then got your own warehouse, that means your strategy is probably not Lego. So then you kind yeah, of. I think. Defeat well, I think the be- you got it. Yeah, I think the best strategy is to have a warehouse as your working warehouse for your normal FBA, and then put aside a corner yeah. for Lego, and that way you're just going to probably pay your rent just from the Lego. Um, it's a tricky one, but people can do yeah, it. Um, great strategy. Yeah. Um, I, I don't think just getting into it. I don't think you can ever know what the right strategy is with Amazon FBA. If I'm brutally honest, like I'm not saying it's yeah. not you can't go for one sort of particular niche or whatever or strategy and not go for it. But things just constantly change. Like Amazon are always introducing yeah. new things. So 
you're thinking in your head, oh, you know, I might just do RA. And then, you know, you see people doing private label or wholesale and you think, oh, I'll do the bit of that. And it's just trying different things. And then you're constantly like, all right, I'll, I'll try a bit of this, but then that might not work. So then I've got to try something else. You know, there's nothing wrong with changing yeah, your strategy. Absolutely. In fact, it's the you best know, thing to there's do. so many different ways. So many different ways. Isn't yeah, it? exactly. So, as a strategy becomes more popular, as people see people making money with it, then that strategy probably ends up dying off and you just find the next one. So anyone who's always innovating, I think is probably a good thing trying and pushing new things I think um, just to be honest whatever it is you're doing just to enjoy it yeah that's true enjoy as well. the process. Yeah, that's very important to enjoy it as well um yeah. but no that's that's awesome yeah that, yeah, was, a, that was a great sale that anyway but yeah so sometimes you get that you know but you need to so you've been doing yeah uh, yeah and you just don't know you don't exactly. know exactly don't know when the next one's going to come around do so you, you're so. big into ra right now you're doing some ra today then um went out about got some... yeah um i think it's because i've got that consistency now with certain items mm that are selling well that I know for one, they're probably not getting into disco groups, but also two, they're consistently being there in shops cool. as well. Um, which is always a side because if you can find like a good lead farmers and it's, it's always a plus. Okay, yeah. And as long as you can keep getting the stock in, because sometimes with online arbitrage, obviously it, it might only come around once the sale. So yeah, that's true. if you don't go in deep enough, then obviously you uh, you might be missing out on some profits and things like that. Cool. Again, it's like we—that's why I like going in. It's like we always say: you got to learn the the brands, the sales cycles, what oh, yeah. brands sell, all that kind of stuff, really. And then yeah, you would see them on. You know, when it's on sale in a supermarket, that that brand it always does well on Amazon, yeah. whether it be Lego, or whatever. Like um, I say, I, I just particularly like retail arbitrage just for a few different reasons. Mm -hmm. um, and I also find if you're out anyway, it's it's dead easy because you you're already out, Absolutely. so you. It's not from popping into supermarkets and things like that, or whatever it is you're yeah, absolutely. going for. But uh, yeah, I definitely enjoy a bit of retail arbitrage. I don't think it'll be something that I'll, it'll definitely phase out because it'll not be as important. Yeah. Um, but it depends because you, even with just say you did, I don't know, like 95% private label or 95% wholesale, you could always still have a little bit of ra because yeah if you want to you know what's selling yeah them. if you want to get out and about go and make some money i always like going in when i'm doing my shopping Before, you know maybe i've got 30 pounds worth of shopping you know and i see a few lego yeah. sets there on offer or whatever and i'm like well i can pay for my shopping with these you know so i'm not a huge ra Even person if you're buying it but, as well, you know so. it's uh it's sometimes nice to go in and go oh that's a pretty good, good little thing i think the last time i did that was some uh hot wheels tracks i don't know if you got those from sainsbury's they were down to like two pounds fifty or something and I can't remember what they sold for. Um, yeah, but, I think I know what you but mean. But I managed to yeah. get nine or oh, a ten. Oh yeah, the little. Yeah, yeah, the little. Yeah, I think I missed out on that. Yeah. I don't know if it's because I don't know my sales just didn't do it. And that's another thing I was gonna actually say is uh, keep an eye out for stores closing because I actually managed to get a game store not that long ago that was closing. Uh, I can't remember why it's because obviously games in the same brand as Sports yeah. Direct and it was inside Sports Direct. Anyway, it was closed, and I think it was due to rental reasons. But anyway, obviously, they put a 50% sale on. Insane. And I knew somebody that was in there. And the only mistake I didn't make is I didn't have his number. So this is another thing. You're getting, you pe like, talking to people. Because if you had told me, I was about a week late. Mm. And I missed out on so many good things. But, but actually, even when I was still there, there were still incredible deals. Um, so always keep an eye out for stores closing. Yeah. And the good thing is, it, it essentially, I'm... Um, there's there wasn't there's not gonna be much competition with the stuff I bought because yeah it's at full price everywhere else so yeah absolutely yeah so that's a great the great thing about RA is the competition generally is lower um, unless it's obviously goes out to every group it was a national one um, gen it, yeah if it's your own deals it's a bit yeah. more so easier. that was a game a dedicated game store yeah. was it that was shutting down okay yeah, yeah. it was inside so it was inspired sports direct it was just part of my route anyway. okay it was, one that was in, there was a sale it was on. inside sports direct and they're still shutting it down yeah oh, okay interesting yeah okay cool um it was because of rental reasons so i think the person that owned so it might be sports direct anyway i think they were closing down just i don't think they were like making enough money or something like that and it was going to get turned into a gym okay yeah. um that was briefly what I got told from the game um, guy, but he's actually moved to another one okay. nearby where I have to send all my stuff to if I pick up stuff from game. But essentially, uh, there was a, a sort of a sale on. I went in and I was just like, big signs saying like, everything's 50% off. So they just need to get rid of it because they didn't want to pack it up to move it back to the sort of depot where they get, well, obviously order all their stuff in. Yeah. So I was picking up like Lego, um, 
what else was I picking up? Like headsets, um, Xbox controllers, nice. all fifty percent off, and I'm like, this great is like, selling products, all that stuff, all that stuff sells so fast. Yeah, all, all, all great uh, selling, fast yeah. selling products as well. Um, off the top of a Barbie. Um, the um, what else was it? It was like things like Hot Wheels as well. Yeah, um, but like the big thing, which was for me, was the Lego. And even the some of the stuff that wasn't on sale, you, the guy I knew was just like, yeah, do you what? You can have that fifty percent. Nice. You just needed to get rid yeah, of it. So that's like, cool. I mean, if you're just nice to people, they'd be nice to you back, and we'll just have a good conversation. Yeah. It was like a big Lego set that um, I think it was like a hundred pound Lego set or something like that. And you said, yeah, just have it for fifty. Sick. So you've got to love that, haven't you? I love Lego, so yeah, I yeah, love that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I was right. It was right up my street. Um, but if you just be nice, yeah, like, to the staff in there, they'll they'll be nice to you back, and they, they might do you a bit. They might do you some favors yeah. or something yeah. like that. Just keep that in mind. I always, yeah, uh, try to be nice to people in this. Like when that Lego sale was on, you know, there's a woman there. She ended up taking three or four sets off me. I was like, yeah, fine, go for it. Um, you know, and the Hot Wheels one, yeah, you know, like, the, the lady was like, oh, I was, again, it was like, oh, I was looking for that for my grandson. I was like, yeah, go on then, take one if you want. <laughs> so, you know. Just, <laughs> the thing the thing I found with Amazon, is people are very sort of secretive and discreet, oh, and yeah, I yeah, yeah. find people quite rude because when I, that Lego steel was on, people were like sort of like doing this thing where like, I don't like, and maybe I did it when I first started, like pretending that I don't like want people to know, but people were doing this, like, really, like, sort of thing where they're like giving you funny looks, mm. like, because they were obviously scanning. Um, and they were like, sort of like, sort of like rushing to get the stuff, and like, <laughs> yeah. you're just like, eh, like, just it doesn't need to be that way. Do you yeah, know what I mean? exactly. but some people are like, really, like, so, actually, secretive. I, I don't know, maybe it's just like an RA thing, I don't know what it is. Yeah. But... I actually met a, uh, a member of a Discord group in uh, Tesco's during that big sale, and I could see him scanning. I was like, Oh, are you in one of the groups? And he was being really secretive, and I was like, He was like, Yeah, I was like, What group are you? He's like, Oh, are you in some groups? And I was like, Yeah, I'm in, like, I won't mention the group, but. Uh, anyway, I was like, oh, we you know, ended up basically opening him up a little bit. Um, he was sitting there scanning his thing. I was, we ended up talking, and he's now in, in one of my my free Discord group um, asking questions and stuff. But, yeah. you know, I met was... somebody in, um, I mean, I can probably say it was it was farm foods anyway. Like, cool. that's there's no secret you can find deals there. So, um, basically, I was in there once, and I've, I, it wasn't because there was a ping, actually, um, from a Discord group. I was just in there anyway because I, I go in because I know I can find stuff. And I seen somebody, and, and I seen I knew I knew he must have been like a seller, and like he actually was really good. He was really nice. Yeah, he just cool. kind of come up to me and was like, "Oh, like do you do Amazon FBA?" And I was like, "Yeah, yeah." And they actually caught me off though because it's always me asking other people, yeah. like because they're all like secretive or whatever. But I like was just open about it. Then he was actually in another group that I wasn't in, okay, um, which I'm still not in anyway. And I was just like, "All right, okay." So obviously, like he obviously had got a ping that I hadn't seen, mm. um, essentially. Um, okay. and he just tried, told me what it was and I was like oh yeah I think I saw that like a week ago because obviously certain groups are a bit like sort of like they're a bit slower than others to sort of like they might find a good deal like, this is the thing like, it might be controversial I don't know but I know for a fine fact people that work for Discord groups will find deals and they'll not put it in <laughs> yeah. or, like a week later like it's just a yeah. fact like I know what happens um, I'm not like discrediting people I'm just I just know what happens Yeah. Um. so he obviously had found the deal mm-hmm that had just been pinged and I was like yeah I found that a week ago um and then we just had like a bit of a talk and obviously he's in another group and stuff and um yeah then he then he was like a really nice guy and even he was like speaking to the the um the, the sort of the assistants that were there and was just like oh like would you know when you'll get this back in stock and they're like really helpful and like yeah. I've seen the way they operate and they just say basically they'll get their stock in from like a certain depot that the other uh, sort of farm foods will get there um things from and they're really kind they'll just say like they'll just say oh like i can order more in yeah, for you no. and, the, and the and like i and the other day like the the guy that was scanning my items was like oh did you like is that for amazon fb and i was like yeah like i just wasn't yeah i always tell them and if you could about it. And then he yeah. was just like how do i get into it and i was just like telling them and i was like all right he was like yeah good yeah. and i'm like mate like you work for like a supermarket <laughs> like I'm, i know people that like do it at other ones where they probably do amazon or ebay or whatever it is and that probably quids in because they're like yeah. working and they know what's coming yeah it's probably like when that prime i mean like prime was like a big thing and stuff and oh they yeah obviously managing to get stuff. absolutely they definitely Thought was out on sale yeah like backdoored some of that stuff lego obviously i know for a fine fact lego and it's through just doing stuff like this where it's become more of a thing so people seen it but i do you know what it is i don't mind telling people because 
Yeah, I it's never. Good for them if they I want never to do something else with their jobs. Someone says to me, I'm just here at Amazon. Sometimes they're iffy, sometimes they're not. Sometimes you get some real douchebags in supermarkets and stuff, but most of the time people are good. But you, you know, sometimes you do run into sort of, I guess, not nasty people. But yeah, exactly. It's like people that just like, oh. The thing know, is, though. You're not allowed to do that. I'm like, well, yeah. okay, fine. I'll just put it back then. Like, I don't care. Well, you know, this is not that's not my entire living. Just this one little thing from your store. Um, and I, just, you know, yeah, I know. And I worked <laughs> that. I worked this out so quick, and it, it's just a bamboos on my mind, right? It's like I used to buy something, say it was like ten units, um, or something, but I was like limited to three or four, mm. and they would be like, oh, you can't get that. And it's like, so say right, it was ten units or something that was worth five pound. It was like fifty pounds. I was going to spend. But then you'll see somebody else come with a full um, trolley of shopping that's worth six hundred pounds, and they'll be like, "Yeah, that's fine." It's like, surely you want more sales, yeah. but yeah, I don't it doesn't know. go into their pocket, does it? It's, it's so, just, and sometimes you just get. Uh, I just don't. Yeah, people that just I don't know. I don't see why they're, they're always arsy about it. But... Just unfortunately, you get some people that just have a, I guess. Uh, I don't want to be mean here, but like a, maybe a miserable life, or just not very happy, or just don't like to see other people succeed, and that just kind of spills over into. Like... It's, it's just a shame, really. It, you know what but I, I'm always trying to encourage people to get into this kind of thing and, and better yourself and don't put people down. Such a shame. Um, but the thing is, you don't even need to do it like full time. Like yeah. you just do it on the side. Like you might love your job or whatever. Like for me, obviously, I got to a point where I just wanted to do something different. But if you love your job, whatever, mm -hmm. or you're really sort of deep into it, you can always just do it on the side and things like that. And that's why I've always said the pond's so big. Like God, like it doesn't matter what. I make or you make somebody's always gonna be doing 10 times more like yeah. it's literally there's so many different <laughs> ways out there like yeah absolutely it's just so much it is it's just so much competition because even like if ra and oa is going to become a, when it's going to be so like really competitive you've always got you know private label and whatever and it's just getting unique bundles private label so there's, um... yeah there's always like there's always something else out there that you can get into where it's not going to be as competitive as of yet yeah. and you don't have to worry about it too much and thinking, oh, like, you know, there's like, there's quite a lot of people doing it now and more people will yeah. start to do it as you know it becomes more thing. But there's also yeah, you, opportunity. You know what's crazy? There, so. Most people's mortgages are probably somewhere between five that 500 and a thousand pound a month. You can pay that doing Amazon. No problem whatsoever. A part time, you can make 500 quid a month. No problem. Um, yeah, and the world's your oyster. You get, yeah. People go in affiliation. That's what you're starting to do, aren't you? You're, you know, people's been doing that. For, like yeah. it's something I should be doing, and probably everybody. You got, you got affiliation as well, and you know, it's like honestly, there's so many opportunities out there. You, you don't have to just stick to one niche or anything yeah. like that. So there's I actually like watched that. the podcast yesterday uh, from Buy Box Bandits. Give them a free shout out. Um, and they interview a guy who's doing this new. It's called Amazon. Uh, Amazon part no Amazon influencer partnership or something like that, and what this guy's doing um, apparently, if you get accepted to that, you can make videos, video reviews for products on Amazon, and if someone watches a certain length of that video, let's say twenty five percent or more, and then buy that product, you then get a cut of the sale. So this guy is going hardcore into making videos for Amazon, uh, just like product reviews. And you know he's got to the point where he's got like a thousand, two thousand videos. He's making five thousand a month, and he's trying to push this up. So that's another way people are making money, and that's because I didn't even know about. This. I didn't even know. About yeah, me that. neither until a few days Remember. ago. Um, so what he's doing is kind of crazy. He's going in because he basically what he did is um, you have to like actually own the product to review it. So he's done basically everything in his home that he's done. He's been to his family's homes. He's done, done all that kind of stuff. So now what he does once a week he rents an Airbnb and goes in and just scans everything and there's like is that bed frame on amazon cool i'll do a review on that bed frame is that coffee maker there is that whatever it look everywhere there's that light fitting um and does an airbnb every single week <laughs> tries to get 30 40 videos done and yeah um it's crazy that he's able to get a commission from uh anything that they buy but also not only does he get a commission from like that specific uh, video that he does if they buy anything else while they're on amazon at that point as well he gets a cut of the entire cart which is insane so people are making big yeah. money on that that's a brand new sort of thing people are doing um yeah see it's, honestly <laughs> so much opportunity out yeah, there like you absolutely. know like even with the private label side like it's meant like because i know really well established brands and stuff that only sell in the uk and i'm like thinking like they could move that over somewhere in Europe or you could store your stock um, mm. potentially sort of um, yeah, you... 
across the seas like in america but you could also get to the point where you literally can create your own products as well and it's like yeah, there's just so much opportunity out there you know you, there's so many new things as well so you can get into so yeah, there's much there's nothing stopping you uh, even consulting for a brand like that or saying to them okay can i be your partner in europe and do your europe sales for you or i can consult for you because yeah they're missing out on so european options. sales i mean that's enormous germany is bigger than the uk you know that's a bigger market than the uk um, obviously america's mm. huge as well um yeah and a good thing you can actually do as well is like if you've already got a good supply you can just ask them and say like look like have you got any new products in the pipeline mm. you might have products that's got massive amount of demand that people don't actually know about what people are searching for i.e in keywords but there's just no products out there and that supplier can be like, yep, yeah, if this is a new product and then you can get yourself in there and there's an opportunity that's straight away. Try and get an exclusive contract. People just don't realise what actually <laughs> people are searching yeah, for. Yeah, that's true. There's so much, so much, there's so much that people are searching for on Amazon that should, and people don't know about that. that, that there's just no so, products So that's there interesting. So, so, you, you know, so still... if you've got a supplier that's making, let's say, a widget, okay, and then suddenly they're like, oh, we're making this new widget. How have they determined, like, this new widget are they are they looking on amazon and going oh there's a demand for this i wonder if they're doing the research themselves to then obviously Sorry. you know well, you've got to think they're selling uh, not only the uk marketplace they're selling the every mm. probably european marketplace slash america yeah. slash mexico so they're probably looking and creating new products in terms of demand probably for within their own country but then they've obviously got the products and then they're relying on obviously our overseas sellers to pop obviously potentially buy their products as yeah. well um because i don't think they could really know the market you know, like, like the marketplace that we're in if no, that makes no sense. not the locality of um, it but i guess the... that's the problem with yeah the, yeah that's the problem with um chinese sellers yeah uh in the uk marketplace they don't actually know the the marketplace that well um although they do get away with it because i do see quite a lot um of chinese sellers uh, in terms of like products and that that aren't actually that good but and they're not yeah. really well sort of placed either and like the product images are really bad it's amazing, and, you know it? the descriptions are you all good and, and they're still they have like they're making loads of money and they've got like one image a crap description a crap time yeah. you're like how are they doing this but i guess they've just found a good product and it's just, you know yeah and that's what i'm saying like you know there's just the opportunity out there but i wouldn't recommend going that way and having like really bad like private label product and i'm not like saying that that's the way to go about i just i just know that they must be doing some sort of research to complete like to maybe know what the demand's like in the sort of our marketplace yeah. and maybe they're just taking a punt and they're getting away with it i, I don't yeah. know what it is it could um, be like you touched on earlier that maybe this product is doing really well in america and there's no reason it wouldn't do well in the uk i mean that's a legitimate strategy yeah. like we we'll look at red bull you know that guy found that energy drink in uh thailand was like, oh, maybe that would do really well in like uh, the Western market. And obviously made a billion dollar company out of it. So there are some times where there's a, something that's maybe taking off in Australia, for example, that no one else, it hasn't touched the US or the UK yet. And then the person who can bring that over can, you know, make bank basically. Yeah, and you could do that. Um, you could do that with OA as well. Like you could be buying, but I mean, although you do need the sort of UK VAT number, because obviously you need to claim your VAT back, but you could potentially buy from European marketplaces and, um yeah you know like buy whatever product is it if it's a toy or something like that that's not sell that you can't get physically over here you know and that, that might be an opportunity Absolutely. as well or to do it the other way around it's not something know. i've went into but i think that i know people that do do it yeah. um big like really big oa kind of people that you know they're not private label they're not wholesale or whatever but the big oa people that do buy from european marketplaces and basically sell it on like the uk marketplace Absolutely. and you can do it the other way as well i know there's a lot of um i actually ran into a delivery driver who mentioned um when i got some lego delivered from morrison's or something i can't remember which one it was he was saying that um there's a guy that orders loads of like fancy uk brands and then he sends it to expats in spain so you know it might be some sort of like i don't know digestive biscuits for example let's say maybe you can't get those yeah, in, you might not get in spain or italy or somewhere and then the expats want pay. those so they'll pay like six quid a pack or whatever um and you can send them over and it could be i don't know what they i actually he didn't, they didn't ask but i didn't you know i don't know what they actually do sell but it's probably along the lines of those kind of creature comforts that people had when they grew up in the uk like marmite or digestive biscuits or Cadbury's chocolate or who knows what it is you know and they want this stuff so they're willing to pay a premium for it um so yeah actually 
Come, it's funny. I was in a um, like a Greek uh, sort of takeaway slash restaurant place of the day, and they basically got this kind of like drink, which is like fanta lemon, but it's like so much nicer. Mm -hmm. And I know when I looked, I was like asking him and like, you can't get it over here. And I was like, eh, so he must obviously get it from like a sort of a wholesale. And it was just like, give me an idea and thinking like, God, there's like so much like, like demand for like what we want, but we just can't get yeah, it. If that makes absolutely. sense in terms of like, things like that. it's just knowing about it's mad, you know, like, being able to figure out whether you can make yeah. money out of it. But there's uh, so many, I mean, there's so many opportunities to make money on online. I was actually thinking about this the other day. I was like, because I heard about this Amazon influencer program through uh, Buy What's Bandit. I was, I was wondering, is there a Discord group or a Reddit community or something out there where people talk about, I guess, cutting edge ways of making money online? So you cut, because like NFTs is a great example. I kind of got into NFTs a little bit later. I still did very well out of them, but I kind of just randomly heard about it from some guy I mentioned in Discord. But if you got on, on, in early on that, you could have made loads of money. Same with crypto. And then like Amazon FBA obviously was yeah. new at some point. There's all these new things that are coming yeah. out. Um, yeah. I just wonder if there's a, it all, it's, a place. Cause obviously, there's not enough time in the day. <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah. But there's something might pop up. Like, like I like the idea of doing this Amazon influencer program. I actually applied for it. They rejected me um, like automatically. So, cause I don't think I've got a big enough following. Mm. You need a, you need a bit, a reasonably big social media following to get accepted for it. Even though all you're gonna do is make videos on there on Amazon, it's kind of weird. So, but yeah, I just was wondering whether there's like, because there's probably, well, I know there are. There's hundreds or thousands of ways to make money online or in person or, or not, you know, not online. Yeah. Uh, that I don't even know about. <laughs> so, you know. Yeah. Oh no. Um, I don't. That's the thing. You, you, it is good to know different ways because obviously some strategies do get saturated. Like, I mean, obviously that that's why I went the private label because I realized I couldn't really sell a business from OA or RA no, no, really. or wholesale, I don't think really. Um so um, yeah that 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 was yeah. just my way of looking I'll at sell it. Um, possibly but, that's a grey area, but yeah, you would have to have a big business. Yeah. Any my yeah. point is is like you kind of start you start probably with RA and OA, but I'm not saying God, I know people that you know you can make you could make millions, but I'm just saying like it's just what your sort of thinking is and my thinking was just if I went into private label, it would just be easier to sell the business if that makes yeah. sense um, so I, yeah i so said that's the, the well, one criticism of know. doing oara is essentially what you're doing is it's a lifestyle business so when you stop it stops essentially but with something like private label yeah. there's a you know um you're building up a brand ideally you're building up a, a real business that is sellable so you can actually transition this onto someone else and sell it and they can carry on doing it you can't really do that with oara so yeah that's yeah. definitely a good thing it's, to think um, about and you know it's amazing to see these multiples of what uh, private label brands go for, actually, you know, like 30 times the monthly revenue or whatever it is, you know, you can. So every time you make a sale and let's say you're making one pound on uh, your, your private label product, in theory, you might actually be making three pounds because you're kind of like banking two pounds for the future. Like if, if you sell that brand, that product, that, that company, sorry, in the future. So it's very interesting. Um, so you're on the right path, I think. <laughs> future millionaire yeah, I, it does make I put money on it so it doesn't it does make you think but it's it's you know what it is it's it's more the enjoyment but of doing the private label because obviously with the REOA, really in reality in any business the more money you're spending wisely the, the more you're obviously going to make yeah. so essentially with the OA, RA, you, you need more skews but i found myself kind of the more you kind of have to then manage more because you've got to then keep them in stock check the price um you know like if it's still in stock and check if it's still profitable or whatever yeah. but with private label it's just a little bit easier because you've got like less skews to manage at the minute for me i'm at that level okay. anyway i'm not saying in the future because i'll have probably 10 times as many as i do now but it's just at the minute it's easier to manage a few le like less if that makes sense yeah i, yeah, I agree um, i think the best way to scale so getting into oara is super easy you can make 500 pound a month thousand pound a month pay mortgage no problem easy scaling it becomes a little more difficult and you also get to the point like adam's saying scaling yeah where you start it's just too much and i think that's where you have to start make sure you get have good systems in place systematize everything you do and then pay a virtual system to do it that is probably the the best way to scale that business, and then see. But you need to Delegate. you need to have specific steps in place that you can teach someone, and they can do your exact job that you're doing, and take off away all that stuff. Whether it's the admin, the reordering, the website checking, all that kind of stuff. 
just pass it on to someone else, basically make a step-by-step guide and then just pay them. You can get uh, someone in the Philippines to say 300 pound a month or whatever. That's a full-time living for them. Um, and then do it. I just think, yeah, like don't do it all by yourself. Yeah. You've got to have help because, um, you know, even if it's, uh, it's not, it's probably small, but it's actually really a big thing. Even just get a prep yeah. center. Like if you do not, like if I'm, I'm trying to talk to people that's probably doing RA away. That might, that might just be starting. Um, you get to a point where you probably can't, pack all day or whatever it is and you've got a job um yeah. so you you want to try and delegate or a prep center that, that's I, something i would probably I recommend hate packing now, i'll be honest it just it bores me but i just i just put a podcast on you know and just listen to that while i do it but i've, I've got like a limit of maybe two hours a day i can do a packing and then i'm just done i can do i can you gotta think big yeah. though um I think you've just got to think big. You, you you're not gonna be able to sell a business packing all the time. No, you, so. absolutely not. No, no. So I'm yeah, I'm definitely just trying to get into people's <laughs> thinking. I'm not saying I'm not not. Oh no, I'm just saying I agree. You've got to try yeah, absolutely, think. yeah. It's definitely a mistake that I make packing myself. I do have a reason why I do it. But that reason's now gone. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> so I yeah. I do it. I, I still I'm still packing. I do RA. I'm just saying you've yeah. done. Well, RA is trickier. I, I guess in theory, if you're willing to take a cut. Uh, 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 lose a bit of money with RA, you could literally just chuck it in a box, not worry about labeling it and send it off the prep center that way, but then you'd incur quite heavy shipping fees. Yeah. Um, in yeah, theory, I think, I think you could that, do that. Just charge a pair. Or what you could do is build it up, find, get a prep center that's somewhat close by, like an hour away, maybe at most. Uh, get yourself a van if you've got a van or a big car, and then just take it all in bulk to them in one go. Yeah. Could be another way. That's a good idea. Because prepping the time of just exp- you obviously know, but explain to uh, the viewers like it's not putting it in the box. It's the most time consuming thing. It's like the prepping, like maybe it needs poly bagging. They all need labeling with skew labels. You know, you have to go on. It just it just takes it takes longer than you think. Basically, the prepping, um, and then obviously if you've got lots of different items, you need to make sure they fit in the box right to maximize the box, <laughs> all that kind of stuff. Yeah, it, 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 it's definitely you know, time it takes consuming. Thirty so. minutes a box, you know, something like that. Depending on how what you're doing and put what you're putting in it, um, you won't you won't be able to do it every day because you'll find yourself buying more and you'll just be like, what if's yeah. going on? So that's probably more for the OA side. That's why I use a prep center. For OA, but in terms of like RA and stuff, I still do my own uh, packing. Yeah, um, no, but no. maybe I fa- maybe I phase it out. But all like I say, think just, it's just too many opportunities. Also, like build it up. So. Maybe you know, uh, save it in a warehouse, in a storage unit or something, and then basically just send it to the prep center. You know, in a van or something. Rent a van for the day because in the end of the day, let's say you can store it in your garage, for example, and then you rent a van for four hours, load it all up, send it in. The van's going to cost you a like, hundred quid for the day or something that's money well spent i think to not have to prep that yourself and you've saved yeah. all that time and that yeah. you know you, you probably saved just... i don't know how they would charge you yeah that'd be fine i don't see, oh, no, the, I yeah, don't see was, why they they were still it, it's the same as oa isn't it really yeah. they would just, just charge a bit of the yeah unit, exactly the same thing unit. as normal basically yeah so um obviously just takes a little bit of time for you to drive the van there i mean just an idea basically if you wanted to kind of like do a ra but pass it off to a prep center um if you're going See, hardcore into yeah, it. I'm, I'm probably stuck for that for where i live but uh, i'm presuming it'll probably be a bit easier if, yeah if you've got patent centers nearby you know, yeah you'd um, see, they're, they're, that's, that's they're kind of all over the way. place aren't they oh, they're mostly northern um but yeah you can always just have a look and see if there's one close by or i'll do what i did get a, you know i got my cleaner to start packing and prepping for me so find someone local who's willing to think, uh, yeah it's just like you just you got to think while you're doing that like what what could you be doing like you know if you say i don't know you might only work two hours of your day in amazon fba and if you're spending two hours packing then you know you need to think yeah. like what could i be doing absolutely um, yeah instead of packing if you're really good at sourcing uh, and you'd rather spend two hours sourcing than two hours packing then 100 yeah. pay someone to do the packing because then that two hours sourcing can be way more valuable um you know anyone can this prep. is what this is the <laughs> mind, it, it, yeah like it's the mindset you're in if you're in the oa yeah. and RA mindset you're thinking like that but if you try to juggle like what i'm doing it's like yeah think. i'm to be honest i'm not perfect i, I still i'm a bit of a micromanager oh. um i need to let go of some things it's just yeah sometimes it just sucks with the cost he's like if you have a bad month yeah. like i was hardcore into prep centers and oh and uh vas and stuff yeah, last year and then when i had a, bad, a few bad few months and all my profits were gone and i was basically breaking even i was like a bit discouraging but yeah but it's got to be done and then you could spend more time like you know obviously right now i'm getting more into youtube so i could spend more time making videos I do a bit of software. I do, I do all sorts, basically. So, yeah, there's uh, coaching, things yeah. like that. So, yeah, yeah, you need to... Well, I would definitely say, like, 
get into that mindset, maybe just delegating a few jobs and things like that, because you can't do it all by yourself. Yeah, but this is something you, you learn you as you go, isn't out. it? No one's going to be perfect right off the bat. You know, um, oh, you, geez, the amount of, mis- <laughs> I make, the amount of millions of mistakes I make <laughs> daily, do you know what I mean? Like, well, that's what you learn. You know what I mean? That's the best. You make more, you learn more from your mistakes than you, than you do your successes. So, um, the thing is with Amazon FBA, man, people will be like watching them. They'll just see like the orange bars. They don't see oh, all like. I hate the orange bars. You'll oh. never. Well, I hope I've never posted a social media thing with orange bars because I don't, maybe I did I'm one smart. tweet one time, but it's so such a pointless chart. But I know why people do it um, because it looks. What I, what good, I recommend is but, yeah. See what your sales is. See what your sales is. Kind of ignore it. See what your profits is, kind of ignore it. Yeah. Scroll down your expenses, then you'll see what your profits are really yeah. like. Then Revenue, know. which is never something I've ever looked at. People said me, oh, what's your revenue? I was like, oh, I've got no idea. I've no, I've no idea. What I'd have to look. It doesn't always mean your business <laughs> yeah. is profitable, though, yeah. does it? I, mean, so. I could sell iPhones all day, you know, uh, for, make a £10 loss on them and probably sell thousands a day. You know, I'd be broke <laughs> pretty quickly. But my yeah, sales would be really good, you know. Um, yeah. But, yeah. yeah, so, yeah, I... I get why people do it because it looks it. good. You can see these big numbers yeah. for new people coming on. It's quite a uh, yeah. an appealing thing to see. As long as you're making a profit, it, it is good for sales because yeah. obviously you're, you're churning your money quick. But if you're actually not making profit, then you're kind of Absolutely. not really, then your business isn't probably growing, if yeah. that makes sense. But if you're making really good profits, then but, yeah. That yeah, we can always get like, the big orange, but really, I could start really. selling stuff as it. You know, I've got some stock that I'm sitting on for a while. You know, I'd write and wait for the price to come back. I could sell it for 0% ROI and uh, get a big orange yeah. bar, but I think it was, pointless yeah. really. So yes. You just need an element of luck as well, I think, because you kind of like, if you get into a cycle of like, you know, you're holding some for three months, I think you just like, it's just like, because nobody really knows the algorithm of getting the buy box but if you just get a bit of luck like if you get like manage to sell something at a higher price if that makes yeah. sense we've got a little visitor um, <laughs> uh what are you doing <laughs> um yeah. so essentially if uh yeah so if you get a bit so i don't know the actual i'm not like a geek on it i just i mean i just generally think sometimes you need that bit of luck to like people sell something at a higher price yeah that comes down to your reprice it probably yeah. as well um, so yeah i mean i've got some things that i'm waiting on to recovery and it probably will never happen so that's a mistake that i learned because you could like read all the charts really well that's what yeah. i'm saying like you just need like an element look like you you know that's what i'm saying i make bad purchases all the time but i've read all the charts you know the should it should sell at a but, good price you know, but sometimes it just doesn't i don't know what it is it's just yeah it's just it, yeah who knows really it could be just the, the way it, it could is, just be that it? people have gone off that item you know or there's a better th- item that's come yeah. along that you just that's something out of your knowledge base basically um just don't want to knock off the light i've got like a light perched on my desk there um to come crashing on my head um but yeah so it, but it it, it, quite, it it, you, the bit of the algorithm buy box is probably to do with where um, your items are stored, isn't it? With the different warehouses yeah, and stuff. Yeah, that's why it's it goes on lots of stuff, that, doesn't it? As well, yeah, uh, it, yeah. But say when you buy these things, you know, if you're buying ten items, maybe one won't do very well or two, but the eight will yeah. do well. So it's just a, a numbers game. Um, just it don't be disheartened. That's what I'm saying. Sometimes you've got to hold on to it for a while. Yeah. Because we're always getting stuff sold, and you're like, God, when did I buy that? It's been like six months ago or something like that. You know, James, that's nah, all good. It's never up there, ages. I've had, I've had these ones here for like that's four or five months now, or something the, like that. It's just after, I think it's the gold one, yeah. But they'll they'll do well Q4. It's just them gold yeah. ones that was just one of the leads, yeah. Wasn't it? So I don't know, I think they crashed actually, <laughs> but again, I'll just hold it for the long term. Uh, I think so, yeah. Oh, yeah. I've just been too lazy to send in the There's... hazmat stuff, um, but yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's the thing with asthma. You've got to have enough of it, haven't you? So But um but yeah, I recommend anyone get into the FBA. And I think it's just a good gateway thing for just getting into other business, get your entrepreneurial juices going, you know, and then you start looking and thinking yeah. about other things and it kind of like it's a good gateway. You're thinking bigger and you're thinking ahead, aren't oh, you? Oh yeah. There's so much opportunity. Well, I would it's, definitely say it's overwhelming enjoy. actually. It's actually it overwhelming, well. I find at times. I've got so many ideas, so many things to do, so many ways to make yeah. money that that's what I'm saying. Just enjoy what you're doing, like the process. Because yeah, yeah. Well, whenever you get that number you need or whatever it is to get you, like, you feel really good. You'll probably want more. So it's like, yeah, just yeah. enjoy that exactly. process. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah. Um, yeah, you get because to... I like for me, I'm constantly reinvesting, and my mindset is I'll probably do that for the next fifty years. That I come because that's my like kind of lifestyle and the way I am. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So I know it just depends on what your lifestyle is, but. I know people that's doing crazy numbers and they're like, well, I don't spend it. Like they just reinvest it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, so 
enjoy it. Just enjoy the process. Yeah, take some money. Yeah, enjoy it. Yeah, enjoy the. But you gotta enjoy the business you do. Totally. Um, I guess if you really do need the money and you just need to hustle, then I suppose fine. But there's other, probably other opportunities out there that are better. But so, what motivates you then? Like just paying for the family, I guess, or just uh, what, what's what's your um, motivator really? To my my first motivation was probably just to get out of the job. Really, my like my mind was always thinking like of working for myself. That was what my my main motivation was. But then I just kind of fell into managing, get into the um, doing sort of full time FBA, which it's not really full time. I was, I'm not actually that doing that sort of eight hours a day or whatever it needs to be to be full time. <laughs> Me neither. To um, be, me neither. I, 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 I probably spend like one hour a day doing FBA right now. I make ten grand a month. I do like one right. or two, maybe no, like maybe one or two hours. I don't know. Like it's kind of crazy. Saying that, I am always I, on the Discord groups. Like so I'm sat at my computer. I'm looking. You're not, you're not completely focused yeah. eight hours. Like you're just not. I've yeah, got other yeah. things I, I do. But imagine that. God if you did eight hours a day. I mean, you'd be making so much money. <laughs> yeah, um, I think it's just like there's because you don't need to sometimes spend more time than needs to be. Yeah. If that makes sense, so you probably could do eight hours work, but I don't know if it would be productive eight hours. If that yeah, makes I sense. get it. Yeah, it's tricky. Really. Depends on what your list of jobs is, I suppose. Really, doesn't it? Yeah. Um. Because, yeah, like, there's only really so much you can probably do, but then it depends if your mind doesn't switch off. You can probably, like, have loads of different ideas and you kind of, like, yeah. you do probably get to the point where you're doing what you're maybe doing, just, like, where you are doing different things and things, stuff yeah. like so that. everything I do is related to FBA. So my software that I created, the YouTube channel, everything is still built around FBA. But in terms of actually, like, doing sourcing or stuff like that and packing, uh, repricing, whatever, generally like, you know, admin one hour, two hours a day, probably on average. Um, and then I'm obviously doing other things, but if you do, I mean, I guess you spend eight hours a day doing FBA and you're sourcing for like four or five of those, you're going to run out of money. <laughs> so <laughs> Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Um, I think it's just, I suppose, maybe it is more yeah. of like you're thinking big, but you've kind of do it. You kind of have to do it gradually. If that makes sense. I don't know. Yeah, Maybe I'm just looking depends at how much money you've got to start with. Way, but... Like, but you know, people are always saying yeah. they run out of money. Um, I was chatting to one guy today. Yeah, because you're finding good deals, aren't you? And you're just yeah. like, so, you're I guess at that point you just stuff. keep pushing your criteria up and up and up. And then what you can do is any good deals that don't meet your criteria, but are still good leads, you can sell to someone else, like for a fiver or something. You, know, you can say, oh, do you want this lead? It's worth like thirty pound a month. I'll yeah. give it to you for a fiver, and you've got a good replan there. You know, you could make money doing that um, if you wanted. Yeah. So. The opportunity as well. Um, I was actually thinking about you doing. But you yeah, could do I mean, something very similar, actually, with because you do quite a lot of RA. Maybe you pass up on some deals. I don't know what your criteria is. Like, do you buy a thirty percent mm -hmm. RA item, or do you skip that? Or ah, uh, yeah, that, that's that's maybe where I made the mistakes. Uh, probably not. I would probably say it's got to be higher. But at the same time, if it's a fast selling product, that's me know what it is but sometimes you're buying something you're like in hope and that because you i always try different items and yeah. stuff like that because there's certain groups out there um that pay you uh to do retail arbitrage sourcing so you know you could always do mm, that yeah. and just keep the good ones for yourself assuming that's allowed <laughs> and then sell the ones that are still good leads but you're just kind of passing on, you know, um, could be another way to make money out of doing uh, retail arbitrage. Yeah. You know, you could just, just say, just or if you run out of money, mindset, yeah, you, you could just go out and do it um, and just sell the leads. But my, to be honest, to be brilliant, my motivation is if I'm just making, essentially, it comes down to numbers. If I was just making more than what I was of my job, like that, that is what my initial motivation was. Otherwise it just wasn't worth yeah. it. Um, you like, but then once I surpassed that, I was a bit like, right, I've surpassed that. I was <laughs> yeah. like, what's my next goal? Do you know what I mean? You constantly are working towards goals and stuff Yeah, like it's that. good to have goals. I mean, I've got very lofty goals, um, but who knows how I'll achieve them. Yeah. But it's good to have those goals. Do you like the freedom, though, of working for yourself? Oh, God, yeah, definitely. But I, I'm, I'm a little bit, sometimes I need to be told to do stuff, but I've got that. I am quite good with, like, if I need something to do, and I will just do it because I want to do it sort of thing, not because I'm like... Oh well, I'm full time now. I can just chill. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's, I'm still I'm still busy and stuff like that. Yeah. So do you um? But it's more the free, okay. more the free yeah. Okay. Thing. Cool. Yeah. So do you uh? Are you working all the time? Like, mon or is it just Monday to Friday? Try and take the weekends off, or um, I would say I'm 
seven days. Seven days. Oh, it's definitely seven, seven yeah, days. I'm the same. Because, but it's it's some some days. It's like I do quite a lot in the mornings, and then I do have like an afternoon where I'm not doing much, and then the night I do quite a lot in the night time as well because I get quite a lot more time in the night. Sometimes I'm just only doing nights, and then sometimes I'm probably like maybe just doing one or two hours a day. So it, it just constantly changes. But that's down to what I, like me setting them hours. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. What other job could you really do that? Do you know what I mean? Where you can set your own hours exactly, sort of thing. Yeah, so. So, yeah, I'm the same. I work too much. I'm actually trying to set it to the point now where I'm uh, maybe give myself the weekends a little bit. Just relax or yeah. it's because I basically work yeah, until I've I crash. And, and then like I that. like you know, just sleep for like two days. Just do nothing. Um, I just feel burnt out. Yeah. There's certain hobbies, yeah. um, yeah, like uh, I've got I've got quite a few hobbies and stuff oh, like that, but I don't miss out on them. Still. Okay. Because obviously you can't just be constantly fully out of con all the time. I don't think, but no, yeah, that's probably. I definitely need to get back into like tennis or whatever, you know, and just get back into basically for the past two years for me, I've been yeah. pretty much 100 percent focused on FBA, um, which is kind of it's good and bad, you know. Um, but yeah, it's good to have that balance, I suppose. That's the, and it's something I'm struggling with is just trying to have a better balance um where it would work I think and... for me it's like you need to like figure out your why because once you hit your goals you're like well i've hit them now so then what's my next goals and you hit them and you're yeah, like well, exactly just hit goals do you know what i mean yeah. like, it's kind of cr- if you don't really know your why like i'm not perfect i'm just no, saying no, it's, it's just interesting to, to hear like your motivations and your thoughts behind it um yeah good to have a but freedom definitely yeah, for me it's freedom definitely as well freedom. absolutely yeah you can like I say if you want to take a day off take a day off you know um take a week off take a week i mean you're gonna yeah. suffer maybe uh but as long as you're willing to accept that little bit of a, a dip in the business i guess um because even if you've got like vas and that you still need to be on on it or if you delegate i don't know like 50 percent of your jobs you still need to be on it you can't just yeah. like oh i'm having like a month off it'll be all cool. yeah, okay exactly. it doesn't work like that because they'll start working as much and you know all that kind of thing yeah we were talking about vas earlier and like i said we've so we've got a va together and um you were having a chat with him today. And I, I, one thing I was going to say actually was it's always good to, I found with virtual assistants in foreign countries, especially from um, the Philippines is uh, not to be like harsh or anything like that, but they like, they sometimes will just agree to be, um, they'll say, you ask them a question. I'll say, yes, I understand, even though they don't, because they just don't want to maybe not be confrontational about it. But, just part of their culture, I think. So sometimes it's always good to ask, like say, oh, do you want to just explain what I said to you? Um, just so you know they're definitely understood. Yeah, because um, there's been a few... That's what I was trying yeah, to do. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Because yeah. there's been a few times I've been so I've explained something. I spent like five minutes explaining something. I said, do you understand? They're like, yeah. And I'm like, well, explain it back. I said, oh, no, I didn't actually hear you. My headphone wasn't working. I'm like, well, <laughs> you know, let's just be honest with each other here. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to help you. Um, just, yeah, just, like, it's just a mindset yeah. thing. I'm not, uh, I'm not perfect. I've probably been in that sort of mindset before, but I'm like, I just like if you like think for yourself but I think it's because it was the job I was in like I had to do that so I was like I can't just be like dull where like mm-hmm. you just program to do the minimum so I was like always having to think for myself so I'm just like trying to get if you get in your V if you get like a virtual assistant you try and like get them into that mindset where they're thinking for themselves and then like you don't you, then you'll see if you know if you know they're thinking for themselves then you know they're already in that mindset aren't yeah, absolutely, they yeah yeah like, and then, of where you want them to be something. absolutely and there's so when you're looking at products and stuff there's so much more to looking at it than just a snapshot of like today or even the three months like we found a great i won't mention it because i don't want to ruin it but we found a great product that has a very uh normally is a bad seller but for a very short period of time it's an excellent seller um, because of just a little bit of expanding beyond the, just doing a bit of research on it and understanding why that product does very well for a short period like a seasonal type just thing see, you'll see it. so yeah having uh, thinking about that kind of thing but yeah Awesome. Well, uh, yeah, you've got any final words for our viewers uh, before we call it a day um, or advice? Well, or... we'll probably just have to do it again. Won't we? <laughs> um, no, just just touching up on what we're saying earlier, like you say, just it's more to do with, um, I would say, probably just wherever you're at, just like thinking a little bit bigger and maybe just like when you're like sort of out doing your RA or OA or whatever it is, just like try and think of different ways you could be doing that like to better yourself but also just like thinking like long term as well Absolutely, yeah. um in terms of where where you want to be because for me obviously like i say it wasn't it was only good for so long but you then want to try and push yourself to maybe like doing something that's a little bit more difficult where it's going to benefit you more in the long term but absolutely yeah i think like say it just comes down to yourself absolutely so. it's, it's a journey we're all learning as we go and no one's going to be perfect with everything they do but yeah just keep i guess reevaluating and yeah uh 
yeah, keep progressing, keep learning as well, I suppose. Um, 100%. Awesome. Well, thanks very much for coming on. I hope, uh, yeah, all the viewers enjoyed this interview. Yeah, no so, uh, you know, this is the kind of thing I'd listen to when Hopefully I'm uh, again, anyway. you know, boxing up or whatever, you know, doing some boring task. I'd listen to a podcast like this. So hopefully people will enjoy it anyway. And thanks for coming on yeah. again anyway. I always try and talk to people like-minded and things like that and yeah. on the same sort of journey and you can learn loads get in, yeah get a few people, people together get a discord that. group going or something like that that's what we've done you know just chatting to each other sharing ideas and yeah motivating each other so uh yeah 100%. awesome guys thanks very much for watching anyway uh and yeah we'll see you in the next one see you in a bit